Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello and welcome back to Dirtle Magic. Today we're playing some more time at the Dragon God. Looking at our opening hand... We do have lands, just not quite the hand I think we should keep. Let's go ahead and mulligan. New hand. Unfortunately, only two lands. Looks like we're going down to six. Had we had another land that was an island or a blue source and mi mystic remora, rather, probably would have kept it. Although, Dragon Tempest is something I've been wanting to use forever. New hand. Yeah, I think we can keep this. Looking at our opponents, though, I am pretty worried about send triplets and lowness. Toski's kind of a known quantity at this point. But we have a mana rock. Well, a mana filter anyway. Sort of, kind of. And a Wayfarer's Bobble, so I think we'll keep this. So what do we want to get rid of, though, is the question. Spiteful Visions could be pretty good and slowly get people down, especially against Lonus if they use a lot of clues. So I think Scale Lord Reckoner for now. We can always tutor out more dragons with our commander. Speaking of, our commander is time at 2 and Wooburg for a legendary 7-7 dragon god flying when there's a battlefield, if we cast it, search your library for up to five dragon cards not named Time At that each have different names, reveal them, and put them into our hand, then shuffle. Our first opponent is Toski Bear of Secrets, three green for a legendary 1 1 squirrel. It can't be countered and it is indestructible and must attack each combat of Able. Whenever a creature they control deals combat damage to a player, they draw a card. We did win the die roll. Let's go ahead and do Temple Garden, have it come into play untapped. We go down to 38 and play Wayfarer's Bobble and pass it off there. Our second opponent is Send Triplets. Two white, blue, black for legendary 3 3 human wizard. At the beginning of their upkeep, choose target opponent. This turn, that player can't cast spells or activate abilities and plays with their hand revealed. You may play land cards and cast spells from that player's hand this turn. Not my favorite. I've never even faced one of these. It's kind of taboo. So we'll see how we do, but I'm not looking forward to it. And our last opponent is Lona's Cryptozoologist. Green, blue for legendary 1 2 snake elf scout. Whenever another non token creature has the battlefield under your control, investigate. Tap Sacrifice X clues. Target opponent reveals the top X cards of the library. You may put a non-land permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield under your control. That player puts the rest on the bottom of the library in a random order. And we also covered this on the channel, so if you want to go and check out those games, go ahead and do so. Toski's turn sees Aron Reef the Vastwood into play. Two of the Sand Triplets Island into play. Uh, hopefully not a Soul Ring or something. Nope, no Soul Ring. Over to Lonus. Find Glimmer Snarl into play. Uh, let's see, they do not reveal anything, so it will come into play tapped. We get Reliquary Tower on our turn. Uh, let's go ahead, play Mountain, and crack that Wayfarer's Bobble. Let's go for Black, and we'll pass it off there. We do have a lot of card draw at Black, and a lot of our dragons are Black. The blue ones we have are double blue, and we do have Ristic Stone and Mystic Remora, but I feel like Black's a better thing to get at this point, especially with Spiteful Visions. Over to Toski's turn, Cliffhaven Kite Sail after Castle Garenbrig. It will soon be a flying squirrel. To the Send Triplets, we have Azori Signet after an island. To Lonus, Hall of the Storm Giants. That is not something I expected. Okay. Lonus coming into play for that player. Followed by Mox Amber. To our turn, we get Cultivate. Ooh. I do want to play Cultivate. So, let's go ahead. I was going to do Spiteful Visions, but let's do Reliquary Tower. And then let's go ahead and play the Cultivate. Let's get a... Let's get an Island for sure. And let's get a Forest. Put the Island onto the battlefield. And we'll pass it there. Over to Toski's turn, we have Tyrite Sanctum. Heh, <laughs> it'll become a god. Well, at some point anyway. And they cast Cultivate. I was just thinking, this is the first time I've seen Cultivate in all of my playing of this deck for testing and videos. I'm glad I can prove they're actually in there. They put a snow-covered forest into play. Over to the Send Triplets. No land drops out of the Send Triplets. Seven cards in hand, though. I mean, I don't want to face, like, the full power of this deck, but I do want them to be able to play. Over to Lonus. 
We have forced into play Edric Spymaster of Trest. Hmm. Okay. They will get a clue token. Loneness will trigger. Loneness is on the attack. It's often to send triplets. I understand the fear. Edric Spymaster of Trust will trigger for the first time this game. The Lonus player will draw a card. To our turn, we get Reconnaissance Mission. Yet more draw we haven't seen before. This and Spiteful Visions. Okay, it's going to be a different kind of game. Although Spiteful Visions uh, might get us killed or something. Let's play a Mountain. I want to get down both Spiteful Visions and Orb of Dragonkind. And then we'll do Spiteful Visions. It looks like we might have a response to Alonis. Nope, never mind. Thought there might be a swan song, and we'll pass it off. Next turn, probably pay a commander if there's no counter magic up. And start going to town with the dragons. We will have to race out send triplets and get up some defenses against just about everybody. I'm sure Spiteful Visions will make everybody so happy. Spiteful Visions triggers for the first time this game. Toski gets to draw an extra card, but they will take two damage, one for each card drawn. We have another snow-covered forest into play. What will it be? Six mana getting tapped. It's Toski. They have two mana left to equip the kite sail. Oh, but it is Steve instead. Send triplets turn all the way through, no land drop, even with the extra card drawn. Ooh, that is a sadness. They do have to discard two cards, Consecrated Sphinx and Phyrexian Arena. Ouch. All right, well, we probably won't have to deal with those later. And Send Triplets quits the game. Yeah, that's too bad. Lonus' turn, by the way. Got some mana tapping. I fully expect, like, a Naturalize or something out of one of these players. I don't want to put down Reconnaissance Mission 1 without Dragons. Oh, they have their own Toski. We have a Toski in our deck as well. I wonder if we'll draw it this game. Lonus will trigger again. In either case, I'm not going to put down Reconnaissance Mission while Spiteful Visions is out. I don't want to kill myself. Chrome Mox, another Moxin. Oh, okay. Let's see what they imprint upon it. It will be Sylvan Library. People getting rid of all of their draw. Oakham Adversary coming down. All right. Are we being attacked? We are. We will be taking three. There are a number of triggers. They will be forced to draw two cards, but the Edric Spymaster of Tress trigger is a May trigger. They do not have to draw those. They do draw for both, however. That's interesting. To our turn, we get hit with our own spiteful visions. That's fine, though. We get Smothering Tithe and Blade Wing the Risen. Let's play up planes. And let's summon our commander, Timat. The Dragon God will enter the battlefield, and we will get to go ahead and tutor out five dragons. I always kind of get the same ones, and we will have to discard it. Let's get the Boneyard Scourge. Steel Hellkite. Solemngar the Drifting Death. The Scale Lord. And the Thunderbreak Regent. Just something to cast uh, sooner rather than later. And we'll pass it there. We will have to discard two cards, unfortunately. My mistake. We also have Reliquary Tower. First time I've seen this come out of the deck as well. Definitely a whole different game this time. Over to Toski. Let's see what they're going to do with the turn. We have a Ron Reef activated. Um, it doesn't do anything. Nothing came into play. Old Growth Troll coming down. Gem Razor reach and trample onto Toski. Also says whenever it mutates to Shirt Tucker Artifact or Enchantment Opponent Controls, I wonder which that will be. I'm actually surprised that's the Moxon. Specifically the Chrome Mox. Works for me though. Let's see if they're going to attack anywhere. They do. They're off into us. I guess we'll just block here. Let's double check the abilities. Nothing to worry about in combat. We block with our commander. Nothing should happen. Yep, nothing. So we're good. Over to Lonus. Nine cards in hand after all the draws down to 32. Let's see what they'll do with the turn. Command tower into play. They have six mana available. One short of a Psych Rift, and that's fine. Uh, there are other things they can do. Flood of Tears is a personal favorite of mine. I don't think that's what they're after, though. It's Elvish Visionary. Dusk Watch Recruiter coming down. Bonus is activated. They're going to try to steal something off the top of our deck. Yeah, I saw that coming. They get Instrum Predator. That's uh, that's not too bad. They could have stolen a lot worse. We have an attack. They're both off into us. Oakland Adversary, when it dies, does it do anything? It does have Death Touch. So I guess we'll be blocking Toski. We have a number of triggers. They will draw a bunch of cards. 
We are down to 31, by the way. Looks like they'll be drawing all the cards. Let's see how far they go down. They go down to 28. Second main, tapping down some math for Elvish Mystic. To our turn, first we get Undergrowth Stadium and then Utter End. Let's play the Undergrowth Stadium. And we will cast Thunderbreak Region. And then Scale Lord Reckoner. Although at this point, it should also be called a Regent. And I think we'll pass it off there. We don't want to take too much incremental damage from the Lonus player. So I think we'll keep up defenses for now. I do want to get Solemnguard down next turn and wipe out most of their board though. Our dragons also at least are well protected from uh, removal as far as it needs to be very well considered. We have lightning bolts and possible destruction against anyone who tries to remove them. We have the Sword of Light and Shadow coming down for Toski. So only Thunderbreak Regent would be able to block it. That's unfortunate. It is being equipped to the mutated Toski. Steve gets cracked for a land. Poor Steve. I imagine they'll be attacking into us. They are. Uh, we could block it with a Thunderbreak Regent, but we kind of need to also save our dragons to wipe out the other board too. So I think we're just going to take it here. It also has Trample, so it's not worth much in the blocking department. A number of triggers. They're returning Steve from the graveyard to their hand, and they gain three life. They get to now draw a card again, and yep, Edric also triggered. The Edric trigger is a May trigger. Everybody's chosen to draw, though. We are down to 23, up to 6 commander, by the way. The Toski player back up to 35 thanks to the sword. We're going to have to get rid of that pretty soon. Basilisk Caller coming down. Trample and Death Touch is not my favorite. Blizzard Brawl, Toski's going to run over and smack Edric in the face. Edric is down. Fabled Passage into play and cracked for Lonus. Silver and the Anthem coming down, green creatures they control get 1-1. One, one. And whenever a green creature ends the battlefield under their control, they get to scry one. That made them a little bit larger. We can still kill them all with a Solemngar, but blocking them may become more difficult pretty quick. We have Phyrexian Metamorph coming down. What is it going to be? It's a copy of Scale Lord Reckoner. That's unfortunate. Nissa Vastward Seer into play as well. They'll go get another land. They get to scry one, and she'll be able to flip over. My mistake. She puts the forest into the hand, not to the battlefield. So we have one turn. That means we can probably kill her. It looks like Lonus is being activated. It is, and they're targeting the Toski player. They get Wood Elves into play, some more land search, and that'll put a land directly into play. And Nissa should flip over now. Sad face, could have killed her with Solomgar. Nissa uses her plus one ability to reveal the top card of the library. It is Nikthos Shrine to Nyx. We have an attack, Innistrum Predator will trigger, but on the wrong side of the battlefield. They'll be exiling Fabled Passage. The attacks are all into Toski, I can live with that. Old Growth Dried is on the intercept against the Olcom Adversary. A number of triggers, Old Growth Troll is coming back as an enchantment. It will enchant a far they control, and now it taps to add green green. Bonus's Toski will also trigger, and we'll deal a little bit more damage. Comes to our turn, we get to Neb the Harvester and an island. Let's go ahead and play that island. So we only have enough mana for Solemngar and maybe a 4 or 5 drop. So a 4 drop in this case. But which one do we want to use? We could utter end the sword and save ourselves a lot of trouble here. Otherwise we could utter end the Sylvan Anthem and really get rid of their board state. So let's play Solemngar the Drifting Death. And we'll go to attacks. We'll attack our creatures into the Lonus player and we get triggers from Solemngar the Drifting Death. A lot of things should be dying. Yep, everything dies except the dragons they stole from us. Let's see if they want to block. They do not. They go down to 7 and up to 7 commander. Let's pass it off. Save mana for the other end. I will use it against the Sword of Light and Shadow. I imagine there's going to be Death Touch. Unfortunately, we can't target the creature itself because of the protection from black. Tutoski's turn. Down to 27. Let's see if they equip the Basilisk Caller. If they don't equip it, we'll be in much better shape, but I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. Okay, Toski goes straight to combat, that's fine. So if we utter in the sword, assuming they don't have heroic intervention, we can then block with Solemngar and be pretty okay. All right, so they are attacking us, let's respond. Get rid of the sword. Block with Solemngar and hope nothing happens. Okay, so far so good. Let's see if they do anything in the second main phase. We have the hope of Gurupur. Followed by Eternal Witness, let's see what they're going to get back. 
my wager would be on Blizzard Brawl, because then they can fight Solemgar and kill it. That would be kind of bad. It is Blizzard Brawl. It's a sadness. Unfortunately, Solemgar does have Hexproof, so we won't be losing it. I often get confused with the Dragon Lord who has Flying and Death Touch. If they target any of our other stuff, they're going to be paying with damage and we get to destroy something they have. So this should be interesting. Basilisk Caller equipped to Toski. And then we have Steve coming back down. Blizzard Brawl, Scale Lord Reckoner. Yep, it's being targeted. Alright, let's put some stuff on the stack. We'll blow up their Basilisk Caller. They don't need to be gaining any life. Basilisk Caller down. Thunderbreak Regent will trigger. They will take 3 damage. Down to 24. And fortunately, our Reckoner goes down. The uh, base creature is a 4-4, so they were... Sorry, a 5-4. They were well within being able to kill it. Steve gets the sack. Kite Sail being equipped to the Toski. Over to Lonus. Nine cards in hand after the draws. Down to five because of damage. Island into play. Let's see what they do at the turn. They do have a lot of mana. Potentially some removal and things. Although I don't think they want to be targeting our dragons per se. It would put them in a pretty bad position. Nissa is being activated. They'll create a 4-4 elemental that is legendary called Ashea the Woken World. Sylvan Anthem will trigger. I do think there needs to be a white counterpart to Sylvan Anthem. I don't know what it would be, but frankly, this but white would uh, would be fantastic. White should be able to scry as well, I think. Steel Leaf Champion coming down. Lone is coming back down for that player. Vivian Monsters Advocate coming down. Nice. It basically has a tutor as its third ability. I do like this version of Vivian, but they all tend to be pretty good somewhere. Finhorn Elves coming down. Vivian is being activated to make a beast creature token. I imagine it'll get a reach counter on it. It in fact does. Okay, I'd imagine they'll attack with possibly both dragons. Oh no, just the one. It becomes tapped, it'll become larger, and exile something from a graveyard. Let's see where it's attacking. It's off into Toski. That's fine with me. Damage is good, they are down to 19. To our turn, the first card is a mountain. Followed by a Sea of Clouds. Let's go ahead and I guess we'll play the Sea of Clouds. And let's summon Bladewing the Arisen. And we'll get back the Skill Lord Reckoner. And then we could go for Smothering Tithe, but it looks like we're going to need some blockers pretty badly here. Let's go Boneyard Scourge. And let's go to attacks. I think right now we will just attack with one creature off into the Toski player. Solemn Gull will trigger, getting rid of their blockers. Damage is good, they're up to 7 commander, down to 12, let's pass it off and hope we don't get randomly nuked. 2 Toski's turn, 4 cards in hand after all the draws, down to 10. Oh, and Toski quits the game. Alright, well good game to Toski, I'm glad they stayed as long as they did. Let's go ahead and see if Lonus can do anything. I'm just glad we didn't have to contend with any extra damage on the attacks from Toski at this rate. At this point, it really comes down to what Lonus has for this turn. I think we can break through them on the next turn. They have 8 cards in hand, they are at 3. If they target any of our dragons with anything, they pretty much die, but I don't think that's what they'll be doing. Tons of Psygriff mana. There's so many things that can go wrong right now for us. Lotus Cobra coming down for Lonus. Land and play, Lotus Cobra will trigger for the first time this game. Alter Ego coming down. Will it be a copy of Solemgar? It is. So they have 3 dragons currently. None of our dragons would die because Solemgar can't attack yet. And I don't see any changelings. Lord Scale Coldal coming down. That'll get big quickly. Uh, we're kind of going to be helping with that, although hopefully not for long. I don't even know how to pronounce that word, jelly. In either case, it's into play for Lonus. It comes into play at 7 1 1 counters. And when it dies, it splits off into being more jelly. Was it Oshir? Ochre? Somebody let me know in the comments. Nissa is being activated. They get to reveal cards off the top of their library. They get a Bark Channel Pathway. Lotus Cobra will trigger. Birds of Paradise coming down. Zimoni Quandrix Prodigy coming down. Don't think I've seen that before on Magic Online. Well, at least played in-game. Looks like a Lonus activation. That'll be nine clues off the top of our deck. Let's see what they're going to get out of it. They get Dragonlord Dromaka amongst the cards. Not bad. Scourge of Volkus. Karthus. Oh no. That sucks. 
Well, we might have just lost ourselves a game. And it's Karthus. Good game to our punt. It kind of feels bad, though, because it's like we lost a bad luck. But, I mean, what can you do? Wow. It was all down to that turn, and we just couldn't luck out of it. They're also casting a fly. Um, okay. And Werewolf Pack Leader. It's too bad we can't force them to draw some cards. That would be hilarious. All right, let's let them have it. And there are the triggers for now. All of our non-existent creatures will probably immediately die. And they get to exile something from a graveyard. They'll exile Utter End. And there it is. We are beaten by our own Karthus. Sad face. All right, I am going to give it to the Lonus player because that was fantastic. Feels a little cheaty. You know, but it's, you know, it's within the rules. Nothing illegitimate happens, so, you know. But, I mean, just bad luck on our part. And there it is. One to us, four to the Lonus player. Yeah, I don't think we were anyone's friend there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the deck. Okay, and here is the deck. So, I did work on it since the last game where we got beaten to uh, death by Balthor. Added Chromatic Lantern for a little bit more mana fixing. I didn't want to get caught. I felt like last game... We kind of got caught with our pants down with not the right colors of mana here and there. So I wanted to add something to help alleviate that a little bit. Our seven drops did increase. We added Ojutai Soul of Winter. I do like its effect that it has Vigilance. And then, kind of like Solongar, we get to just tap down their defenses and they're Icy Tapped. Didn't get to try it out, unfortunately, but I do like that effect. So I think it's going to be okay in this deck, especially if you build it yourself. Other than that, we also add Kindred Dominance. This is a very expensive card. But I wanted something that was one-sided, wasn't too heavy on the colored pips, and helped support the deck strategy. You could go in Garrick's Wake as a cheaper option, but it's two more mana. So I did go with Kindred Dominance here, but in Garrick's Wake is a good budget option there. I also add for mass removal against other things, Steel Hellkite. We didn't get to play that this game. It's much better against like tokens, mana rocks, that sort of thing. I also add a little bit more land search to the deck, just to make sure we have those lands. We do have 38, we do have... Uh, Balgad Recovery, which is a land on back, and all the land search and mana production we had before, which generally the mana production in rocks isn't too much. It's more land search to grab them out of the deck, so we hit more dragons. I did add Sylvan Reclamation, though, because it has basic land cycling and its removal, and Grave Upheaval, because it's also recursion and, again, basic land cycling. All right, there's the deck. I very much hope you enjoyed this series. I actually really enjoyed playing this deck a lot. It reminded me a lot about my Nivazet deck that... You just, you cast the commander, you get some goodies out of it. This one obviously is a lot stronger as far as creatures go, because dragons are ridiculous. And yeah, it's pr it's most likely cheaper than the Ur Dragon if you're wanting to build a five color dragon deck. And Okogachi just isn't your thing because, I mean, frankly, it doesn't work much of anywhere as far as a leading, inspiring commander, unless you're doing spirits. Can't get an Ur Dragon. And for some reason, you don't want to use Sign of the Ur Dragon. I definitely recommend Time App. If you sell any cards that you want to purchase for yourself, sealed product, or gaming accessories to protect all of that glory, please consider using the TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. It helps out the channel doesn't cost you anything. And if you're interested in the other games of Time At, please go into the description below and hit those links if you want to watch those games as well. You can see our first glorious game where we did the recursion and just beat everybody down, and the second game where Balthar just would not die and pretty much finished basically where they started. So if you are intrigued, go and hit those links in the description below as well. In the description below as well, you can find the deck list for this deck if you want to check it out in more detail. Until the next Commander and video, stay safe out there.